All right, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I want to thank everyone for being here. We wanna be respectful of everyone's time and get started, though we know uh, several more people will be joining us. Uh, we wanna welcome everyone to the Imagine Downtown KC 2030 Strategic Plan Community Workshop number two. Uh, we have over 200 people signed up for this. So we are very excited um, to share with you uh, this session this afternoon. Uh, we hope everyone is staying stay, safe and healthy out there. Um, and we are excited to kick this workshop off. Downtown Kansas City is a thriving business hub, a vibrant arts and cultural center, and a growing residential neighborhood. The Downtown Council of Kansas City, in partnership with several other civic organizations and the City of Kansas City, has begun a process to develop the community's shared vision for sustainable development and economic inclusion over the next 10 years. The Imagine Downtown KC Plan will create a roadmap to guide future growth and investment, including policy guidance and strategies to address community priorities, such as economic opportunity, transportation networks, affordable housing, catalytic development projects, and quality of life. This interactive event will provide community members and stakeholders with an opportunity to learn about the purpose of the strategic plan, process and progress to date, as well as share valuable input on the plan framework, transformative strategies and catalytic projects for downtown Kansas City. I wanna thank all of you for being here. And now I am honored to introduce some videos from Mayor Lucas and Councilman Bunch who were unable to attend, but excited to send a video in. Thank you. Hi, I'm Kansas City Mayor Quentin Lucas, and I am so sorry I can't be with you today as we talk about the future of downtown Kansas City, what successes we've had over recent years and decades, and what lies ahead. But I remain a booster in downtown, not only because of the investments we've made here in Kansas City over recent years, but also because we know that a crossroads of our city, a place where people come from different cultures, from different regions and all around our community is a place with a bright future. Thank you all for working on, thinking about and planning for the future of downtown Kansas City. I'm proud to be the mayor for downtown. I'm proud to be the mayor for the whole region. And I look forward to a successful 2021 for all of us. Thank you all for taking the time to share your vision with us for Imagine Downtown KC. I would like for you all to take a second to remember the Downtown KC of 10 years ago. I would say the transformation of downtown is nothing short of remarkable. Perhaps most impressive is the tremendous growth in the residential population. You know, downtown is not any more simply the largest job center in the region or the economic uh, engine of the region. It truly is a, a, a neighborhood. It's a thriving neighborhood, home to more than 30,000 residents now. And this transformation would not have been possible if not for the planning efforts that ushered in things like the streetcar, the Kauffman Center for Performing Arts, uh, big investments over at 18th and Vine, uh, improved walkability and green infrastructure in the West Bottoms and so on and so on. We can go on and on about all the really great improvements that we've seen in the quality of life in downtown. And the reason is because of the planning that we're doing right now to look at the next 10 years. So this is really our opportunity to, to, to plan for what that next 10 years looks like and what downtown really is in 10 years and how it connects to the rest of the city. And I've been asked to, to share my big idea for Imagine Downtown Vision. And instead, I would like to present a bit of a challenge for us all. Over the next 10 years, I believe we really have to focus on making every effort to restore the connective tissue between all areas of downtown and adjacent neighborhoods that we've lost over the last few decades. This vision is our opportunity to plan for a downtown of many unique neighborhoods, each connected by walkable streets, better public transit, high quality bike infrastructure. So a few ideas, things like expansion of the streetcar to the riverfront and, and uh, to, the, to the Country Club Plaza and UMKC, something that's already underway, which is also really exciting. Um, the Green Line project is something that uh, would provide a, a high quality bike path and public art and green infrastructure all throughout the greater downtown. Uh, removing the North Loop to reconnect the central business district 
to the River Market and River Market to Columbus Park and Columbus Park to the historic Northeast. And preserving the historic Buck O'Neill Bridge over the river when we go to replace it, let's talk about saving it and providing another connection into the Northland and a really great space for people. So those are just a few of my kind of big ideas that really tie into that challenge of reconnecting all of our neighborhoods throughout downtown and points beyond. So I thank you all for participating today. And I look forward to the time when we have a new community driven plan and we, we all can get back again together. But most importantly, when we have this, this new vision for downtown and so we can start to get to work on implementing it. Thank you all and we'll see you all soon. All right, so good afternoon, everyone. Thank you all so much for being here. We are so excited to have a full house of community members, partners, stakeholders, and interested parties to be a part of our second Imagine Downtown KC Community Workshop. I wanna send a special thank you to the mayor and council member Bunch for providing those welcome and opening remarks, as well as Chair Carlton for her welcome and opening remarks. So everyone, good afternoon. My name is Jamila Jordan of MIG. I'm joined by a host of our Imagine Downtown KC project team members here, uh, many of which you'll meet as we go into our breakouts in a moment but we just want to send a warm welcome and thank you all so much for joining us. We have an action-packed agenda lined up for you all today. So what I'm gonna do now is give you a sense of what we have planned for you from our agenda. So in a moment, we are going to give you all just a brief overview of our process to date. There's been so much that's happened over the last couple of months regarding this process. And so we want to get you all brought up to speed as well as tell you about some of the really rich and robust community engagement that's happened over the last couple of months as well. From there, I'm going to invite my colleague, Chris Bainan, to come on up and share a presentation around shaping downtown's future and to really give you a sense of the key components of our plan framework so far. We also really want to hear from you today. This is why we brought you all out and we're going to have a series of breakout group discussions as well as a report back where we'll hear, we'll hear the key level, high level findings from our various breakout group discussions. And then we promise to get you out on time. We'll wrap it up with next steps and closing comments. We imagine we'll have quite a few people coming and trickling in, so we want to welcome them as well. Please feel free to rename yourself um, on your icon there with your name if you'd like uh, so that we can stay connected that way. And with that, we're going to go ahead and move into a couple of poll questions that we have for you all. We want to get a sense of who's in the room here today. So I'm going to invite my colleague, Blaze, to go ahead and kick off our first poll for everyone, Blaze. So I'll read it out to you all, everyone. The first question that we have is, which category best describes the organization, agency, community group that you are representing today? you can select one of those options. You have resident or community member, professional services, nonprofit, education, government, or other. So we'll give folks another couple of seconds to pop in their results. All right, so I'm gonna share the results here. And we can see that we have a majority of community members, which is fantastic. So we have a large number of residents, about 30%, followed by a significant portion of nonprofit representatives here today. Um, professional services will be next, and then government and other, uh, as well as education. So again, welcome everyone, appreciate y'all being here. Let's go to our next poll question, please. Okay, so our next question, everyone, have you participated in any of the previous Imagine Downtown KC community engagement activities? We have been uh, conducting a number of activities, so we want to get a sense. Have you been at the, the first workshop? Have you attended any of the focus groups, any of the community conversations or presentations, the podcast series? Have you had a chance to listen into that? Have you conducted any of our online surveys or polls or other activities?
And this one is multiple choice, so you could have gone to many of these activities. Okay, so Blaze, let's go ahead and check out these results. All right, everyone, so a lot of people attended the first workshop, which is great. We liked it so much you came back for more. We appreciate that. Um, we also had a, we have a lot of people who attended the community conversations or presentations, um, followed by a tie with the podcast and the focus groups, which is great, uh, online survey polls, and others. So there's a lot of other activities we can do. We have one final question for you all, something a little fun. Let's go to the next one, Blaze. So we want to know, in this time, 2020 has been a crazy year for all of us. We want to know, what's bringing you joy? What brings you joy in the greater downtown KC area? Is it strolling through River Market, performing arts at the Coffin Center, a concert at the T-Mobile Center, listening to jazz at 18th Vine, hanging out, gathering with family and friends at a park, embracing the arts at First Friday, or what about dining and libations at your favorite go-to downtown spot? Right, almost there. Let's go ahead and see our results, please. So overwhelmingly, everyone, dining and drinking is our favorite thing to do in greater downtown KC. I'm not surprised. 43% um, followed by, let's see here, we have about 17% for strolling through the River Market on a beautiful day. Um, performing arts at the Kaufman Center, and listening to jazz at 18 and uh, Thank you all so much for that. We appreciate you giving a sense of who's in the room. Um, just want to get a little bit of interactivity before we dive into some of our presentations. So thank you so much. So let's go ahead and move into the next part of our agenda, everyone. So I want to give you a sense of... Um, of how else you can participate here today. So we have an online survey. We recognize that everyone couldn't make it out to be with us today in real time. Uh, this is being recorded. We will post it on our website. But we also want to give other people a chance to chime in, share their thoughts and ideas with us. What are their priorities for downtown KC? So uh, we encourage you all to take this online survey um, and to share it with your friends, families, neighbors, and colleagues. We'll pop it in the chat for you as well so you have access to it. I'll give you another reminder of this tool later in the program. But this is another great way for you to share your thoughts and ideas with us. So now we want to share a high-level process overview of our planning efforts to date. And I'm going to invite Jason Parson of Parson & Associates to lead this effort. Jason? Thank you, Jamila. Uh, and good afternoon, all. We started this process uh, close to a year ago, and we were charged to make sure that at the end of this study, this is a study that we can all be proud of. And through our efforts, the whole goal was to make sure at the end of it that we come out with an equitable, inclusive, and a vibrant downtown plan. And that was done with uh, very intentional efforts. And, and again, throughout the course of the year, our work certainly reflects that. Next slide, please. And so by, by coming out uh, with, with the goal of, of having an equitable, inclusive, and vibrant downtown, what we had to do is make sure that our study area reflected, well, what is downtown? Who are those neighborhoods? Uh, because one thing that we found early on is when we look at this particular footprint, uh, there were certain neighborhoods that uh, in the past would not have been engaged in such a process. And so whether you're looking west to the west, um, to the west side, the bottoms, uh, up north, uh, to the water, to the river, uh, out east where our office is located in the historic jazz district, or even out south, you know, our, our study area 
uh, reflects downtown and it reflects the diversity of downtown. And in order for us to have study that we're all proud of, we had to go to each section of this footprint to make sure we get those diverse vo voices in order to get a product that we're all proud of. Next slide, please. And our strategy, uh, as you can see, it was it was pretty pretty simple. You know, it uh, uh, we talked about uh, understanding the context, and as you can see, some of the different key topics that are that are up on your screen, uh, such as affordable housing, transportation, and equity, uh, and also some of the key catalytic projects that you will see coming up uh, to participate in, which. You know, that's going to drive the, the outcome of, of our work. And so we really want you to play an active role when we get into our breakout groups uh, to voice your, your opinions and, and, and let your experience help guide us as far as what, what, is, what does a uh, catalytic project mean to you and what does it mean to our downtown. And also, uh, the, you know, lastly, the return on investment. What, what, is, what does that look like? Uh, making sure that our return on investment is something that uh, from an economical and environmental standpoint is something that we all can be proud of. And I'm not sure if it's just my screen, but if, if, if uh, I know I have the survey on the poll on mine, so I hope you all are able to see uh, the strategies as, as I talked about them. Uh, next, next slide, please. And, our, and, our, and, and what we wanted to do is have a long-term and short-term uh, a plan here. And again, throughout our effort today, you will be able to hear uh, what, what is long-term? What is our long-term vision? What are the goals? And what is our short-term uh, plan? What does that look like? And through our effort today, we will be able to build out uh, our plan. And again, something that I think we all can be proud of. Next slide, please. All right. Thank you, Jason. Appreciate Absolutely. that. Yep. So thanks so much, everyone. So you all just had an opportunity to hear from Jason Parson, one of the key members of our project team for the Imagine Downtown KC effort. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm Jamila, and I'm a part of MIG. We are uh, one of the lead consultants for this effort, national planning firm. Um, really excited to champion this effort, along with a host of thoughtful strategic partners who know Kansas City very well, including Jason. We have Andrew Knudsen, the leading uh, economic and planning systems expert. Ashley Hand of City5, who's helping us with mobility and transportation, Chris Klein of Confluence, who is a wonderful designer and uh, teammate in his own right. And so we have a really strong team that we brought to bear for this effort, many of which you'll meet in just a moment in the breakout groups. In addition to that, I want to share a little bit about our planning process, everyone. And so uh, we started off back in the summer of 2020. It feels like a lifetime ago now, uh, but uh, we had some really exciting conversations with community members around visioning. What's your vision for the future of downtown Kansas City? What do you want it to look like? What do you want it to feel like? What businesses should be there? What type of infrastructure should we have? Those are some of the key questions that we put to all of the community members who came out to our different activities and events. And then from that, we moved into uh, phase two, which is around ideas, opportunities, and strategies, everyone. We wanted to get a real sense of what are the assets that we're building on? And how can we leverage those assets to create strategies that are actionable that we can really implement as we develop this plan? And that led us to where we are today in phase three, which is around recommendations. And so we really want to take in all of the input that you're gonna share with us and continue to develop and refine our set of recommendations that'll be uh, incorporated into the plan. And the draft plan will be available in winter 2020. So be on the lookout for that um, in the coming months. And uh, that'll be followed by the final plan adoption, winter 2021. Uh, so that's our process, everyone. I want to be sure that you all know that um, this is still very much um, a part of the process where we want to hear your thoughts and ideas throughout the whole thing, but also particularly right now. This is when we're developing these recommendations and strategies that, as I mentioned, will go into the draft plan document. So your participation and your input today is so critical to having a really robust plan. So what I want to do now, everyone, is just give you a quick update on the engagement process and what we've been doing. We've been out in the community virtually and in some cases in person, uh, talking with community members, talking with key leaders and residents, 
everyone who um, has a voice in this process has been welcome. And so we've had several steering committee meetings. Over 50 members are involved in that, representing diverse interests, thoughts, and perspectives. We've had about three meetings to date. Um, you can find a lot of that content on the website as well. We had our first online community workshop, which it sounds like many of you have attended. Uh, and that was held back in July 2020. Over 160 people came out to that one, which is a fantastic turnout. That's some really great input from everyone. We've also had a series of one-on-one -on -one interviews, about 20 or so, talking to different thought leaders from across the Kansas City and greater downtown community, as well as social media. We have an active presence there, Facebook, Twitter, et cetera. Uh, we have a website as well. For those of you who don't know, I encourage you to check it out. It's a great clearinghouse for all of the content and materials, summaries uh, for you all to, to delve into on demand at your leisure. I'm so excited now to introduce our friend and colleague, Kimmet Coleman, who is leading our podcast series. And Kimmet's going to tell you all a little bit about the Imagine Downtown podcast and uh, some of the highlights from that discussion. Kimmet? And let's make sure we have Kimmet unmuted here. There he is. Okay, Kevin. There we go. <laughs> Thank you, Jamila. I really appreciate that. All right, everyone out there, I'm uh, happy to see your faces as I look through the list of people. I'm uh, sitting here smiling at all the um, cool folks that we have on this chat. Um, good to be amongst friends as well. Um, so when the downtown council asked me to do the podcast, um, I pretty much gave a resounding um, yes, because one, uh, the podcast is uh, a podcast is something that I've always wanted to do, but also about downtown spe specifically that was just totally up my alley. And I think that storytelling is such an important part um, of innovation and progress of our downtown and our city. Um, so the podcast is essentially is a series exploring unique perspectives on the future of downtown and adjacent neighborhoods. Um, and, you know, as the listeners, we inspire them to dream big to think about these big possibilities. Um, and so when I think about the, the thank you, when I think about the, the, the guests we've had so far, I get really excited, really excited reminiscing about the conversations we've had, which have been exceptionally impactful and informative, even for me as someone who's already engaged in what downtown could be. So with Chris Bain and, you know, uh, with MIG, and thank you guys for putting this on, uh, it's a great way to have an outside perspective uh, of, um, you know, his discovery of this jewel in the middle of the country and the pride that we're developing here in Kansas City with Tom Jaron, uh, with the streetcar. It was really awesome to get to, to talk with him about how we can connect, uh, we can create these east and west connectors and the role of the streetcar, uh, as, you know, kind of being the bloodstream of Kansas City is uh, with downtown as the heartbeat, if you will. Um, and uh, with Vince Bryan, with 3D development, breathing new life into these old spaces and utilizing roof, rooftops uh, for all their glory and connecting the downtown loop using the green line um, to create the synergistic uh, energy that we're so desiring in, you know, in our future downtown. And when we talk about com uh, Metropolitan Community College and how community college has is such an unspoken, uh, understated asset uh, to our downtown and our city in general. And Kim Beatty is at the helm. Um, I get inspired just thinking about um, her being in that position. And with Lynn Carlton, HOK, um, being you know as respected as she is in uh, you know in the planning space and and really talking about walkability and the importance of public space and the relationship with the built environment and connecting neighborhoods. Um, and then with my good friend Shamari Benton and Erica Bryce. Um, using historic buildings to rever reverberate these stories that are part of our past, um, especially in communities that typically don't get to um, write what's in the history books. Um, it was also important to kind of think about that. So, you know, speaking about the podcast from a broad perspective, I really think this was a great way to tap into some of the folks that are already on the ground doing the work that we are hoping to um, used as a catalyst to reverberate around the city and around downtown to get behind this expanded uh, mosaic of neighborhoods that downtown Kansas City is. 
Great. Thank you so much, Kim. We appreciate you being here. And everyone, if you haven't had a chance yet, I do encourage you to, to rush over to the website, check out these various episodes. We have a ton for you to listen to. Um, and there's just some really great content as Kim has shared, and he's hosting every one of these conversations. We have more on the horizon coming as well. So please check out the website. You can see updates. You can see other guests as well who are coming on to speak. Uh, so we're really excited about this. We've had hundreds of downloads so far and hopefully even more to come. So thanks again. Yeah. And, and one, one last thing, I forgot my good friends, Dana and Michael are really I'm happy to have, I see Dana or I saw Michael on here. I don't know if I see it. No, I don't know if I saw Dana, but thinking about creativity in a whole new way and incorporating the arts from the beginning is one of the main pillars of downtown redevelopment. You would think as someone who's an artist, I would not forget them. But last but not least, Dana Knapp and Michael Toombs, thank you guys also for, for uh, sharing your stories. Right Sorry on. To <laughs> no, absolutely. Absolutely. We want to give everyone love and appreciate them for being a part of the conversation. So everyone, we're going to continue on here. Uh, we also had a, a series of community conversations with leaders, particularly from the east and west sides. And that's because we want to be sure that we're not just focused on the downtown core, but also the adjacent neighborhoods, the adjacent communities. So we've talked with BizCare, we talked with Paseo West Neighborhood Association, the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, uh, the Wendell Phillips Neighborhood Association. Uh, the Hispanic Economic Development Corporation of GKC and many, many more uh, to be a part of these conversations. And I want to share just quickly uh, some of the highlights in a moment. We've also had a series of community presentations, uh, several of which have already been completed. Historic West Bottoms Neighborhood, the Downtown Neighborhood Association, the Urban Neighborhoods Initiatives as well. And you can see on the right there, we have a number of other conversations that are scheduled to happen fairly soon. So we're really excited. If you're interested in having our team come out and talk with you and your group, please don't hesitate to let us know. We want as many people to be involved in this as possible. So some of the highlights from these community conversations and these presentations have included a real focus on development and on business opportunities. And so a lot of the folks we talked to mentioned that it's so important to provide access to capital. But this is often one of the biggest barriers to financing development and getting particularly uh, businesses from communities of color up and running off the ground. We talked a lot about racial wealth building as well and the need for inclusive procurement policies. People also mentioned the focus on developer accountability and being sure that we require compliance from our developers intentional outreach is needed on both the east and west side businesses and to encourage a sense of networking we're all one one downtown kc and we want to make sure that everyone feels a part of and that speaks to the need for more policies and programs for inclusion and equity another set of folks mentioned it's really important that we unbundle projects so that local businesses can bid on on these exciting efforts that are going on around uh, the downtown area. In addition, you know, naturally a lot of people talked about COVID-19 being uh, a real concern and the need to address the challenges that um, are associated with this pandemic, including store vacancies, unemployment, um, some of the non-local purchasing. A lot of us are using other channels, uh, e-commerce to get our, our goods and services these days. And so a lot of our local businesses are losing out and suffering as a result. There's also the growing homelessness crisis that has been intensified and somewhat aggravated by COVID-19. I uh, was mentioned as a key concern. And the need to focus on the immediate impacts. What can we do for businesses, for communities today, uh, particularly in the commercial and residential areas? Um, as another really important topic area was around connectivity and the need to increase that connectivity, particularly in the 18th and Vine and downtown areas and, and along other key corridors like Independence Ave and 9th Street and 12th Street. Housing is always a key concern, the need for affordable housing, preventing displacement and honoring neighborhood identities. In addition to that, we had a series of focus group meetings that were uh, topic based and they were facilitated by our fantastic project team that I mentioned earlier. We had a number of topics that we covered here. I want to share some of the highlights. One was around sustainable development and catalytic projects and that we're going to spend some time talking about today, everyone. And again, it was this idea of improving east west connections that connectivity piece came up quite a bit uh, for mobility. It was around sidewalks being a really important connective tissue in our communities and they currently vary in terms of quality and, and connectivity, but we need to focus on equity and mobility, making sure that we can all access the various uh, gyms and, and communities that, that exist within the greater downtown area. People also mentioned the innovation district, the innovation hub as being a really critical uh, focus area for this planning process and that we need to move beyond just middle and living wage jobs, but have higher income jobs that can support families in a higher quality of life. Supporting local entrepreneurs, particularly low income entrepreneurs and entrepreneurs of color was cited as a real key concern. 
the recovery of downtown was also mentioned, particularly during COVID-19. So a lot of people talked about the need to repurpose our city spaces to be more flexible. Flex space was mentioned quite a bit, how we have to be innovative in terms of how we address the spaces that we have. Uh, downtown parks in the public realm also came up quite a bit. The need for better design in terms of walking, shade, and greenery to make it feel welcoming, a place where we would want to be active and out with our friends and family uh, in parks and open spaces. And then lastly, housing, the need to preserve what we have, preserving this existing affordable housing stock, um, preventing displacements, and really focusing on people being able to live close to their jobs. So everyone, I want to um, queue up my friend and colleague, Chris Bainan, who's gonna share with us in just a moment, our strategic plan framework in terms of shaping our future for downtown. Thank you, Jamila. And I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now and uh, make sure that everybody can see that. We good, Jamila, give me a thumbs up. All right. Well, uh, thank you all. And uh, we've had some great presenters and some great information so far. I'm going to uh, close us out here before we get to what is really the, the important part of today is the interactive discussion with you all. And um, so I want to talk about some of the content that we have developed to this date and or to date and emphasize that this is all built from the community input that we have heard over this past year. There are lots of visuals, there are lots of ideas, lots of information, I'm gonna go pretty quickly through here. What we would love today is your comments, your thoughts, your ideas, your priorities in some of the information you see here. What did you love? What do you dislike? Uh, what are new ideas, things we missed? What are things we can do to augment uh, this, this vision and set of strategies moving forward? And so when we think about a, a vision for and strategy for moving forward with downtown Kansas City, we think of it in a very multi-layered way, beginning up top with uh, that sense of an equitable, inclusive, and vibrant downtown Kansas City, as was described earlier. And then a set of vision elements, goals, transformative strategies, catalytic projects, all of these things in this hierarchy uh, feed into and support that overarching vision. And we're gonna give just a taste of some of that here today. Importantly, we have uh, a set of recommendations, policies, projects, programs, all of those things are gonna be included in our ultimate set of strategies, both short-term, medium, and long-term. As Jason described earlier, this is about a longer-term vision, but it's also about what can we do here, right near-term in this uh, pandemic time and economic recovery to ensure that downtown continues to move forward and is truly equitable, inclusive, and vibrant. Importantly, Andrew Knudsen with EPS, one of our partners, uh, has uh, given us a sense of the economic foundation. I just want to cover this very briefly uh, because we need to make sure that where, where we are uh, at and where we can continue to push and thrive. There has been a lot of growth and change in the last 10 years. I think we're all aware of that. Uh, importantly though, we need to understand who is that benefit benefiting and who might it be displacing? And, and how are we ensuring that we are building uh, a, an economy with innovation and creativity in our business sector, but in ways that uh, benefits uh, everyone? We'll talk a bit more about that today. Um, you know, housing has been hot in the downtown core. Uh, office has seen little new product. We have seen the power of infrastructure investments such as the streetcar, where nearly 60% of all downtown projects are located within a quarter mile of that corridor. That's very powerful because as we look at potential future investments, public infrastructure, ideas where we can uh, put in new transportation, mobility, et cetera, it does have that catalytic effect. This is proof positive. How do we ensure that, that um, it binds us all together and raises everybody here as we prioritize things moving forward? So I'm just gonna give a sample of some of the big ideas and the key recommendations that we have uh, been building to date with your all's help. Importantly, uh, it, it, all of these kind of nest within uh, five different goal areas, starting with ensuring a livable city for all. And this was uh, outlined very early on 
through community input. And that idea, very powerful idea, again, as Jason and others said earlier about this sense of a mosaic of neighborhoods where a lot of people traditionally thought, well, this is it. This is the downtown. This is the core. And in recent years, it's actually extended to the north, to the west, to the south, crossroads, et cetera. And we're saying, wait a second, that's not enough. Great world cities, great places are truly a mosaic of neighborhoods that all have their own special identity and, and sense of services and, and, and place, but then they all connect together seamlessly. And there's so much to celebrate uh, with that distinct culture and heritage. And the idea that of a 10 minute neighborhood, that each neighborhood, each district deserves its own set of goods, services, and amenities so that people can stay in place as they age and their needs uh, evolve in the area. That local um, you know, healthcare services, facilities, ATMs, access to healthy food, uh, mobility, all of these things are so critical to creating a livable downtown environment. We have to extend that more. It involves partnerships. It involves this sense that we are not just a downtown core, but it's all of this uh, mosaic together, working together to solve problems and branding ourselves in that way. Uh, you know, you think again of, of great cities. It's not just the high rise core. It's, oh, I'm going to Little Italy or I'm going to the meatpacking district or this district. We have so much of that richness here that we wanna bring out more in downtown Kansas City. Importantly, housing for all very critical to our creating an equitable and inclusive downtown, fostering more of that. And we have pockets of, of neighborhoods and investment and great places. We wanna see that expand further through preserving existing and creating additional rental and, and owner occupied affordable housing. We need to make sure it's across a range of types and income levels for people at all life stages. Maybe I'm single or, or a young couple and that's one type. And then as a family, I need a little more space or more bedrooms. I can still stay in this neighborhood and afford that. And then maybe later on empty nesters, I have a housing product or type in the neighborhood for me. All of that is a critical part of um, our strat strategic thinking together for the future. Ideas such as the social impact fund, uh, making sure we leverage that infrastructure such as the, the streetcar route. Zoning changes are gonna be critical to ensure that uh, we can dream up these ideas, but can we make it happen uh, tangibly from that regulatory and policy perspective? And how do we streamline processes to ensure that uh, our great ideas together as a community can be built? We cannot talk about housing uh, without addressing homelessness. And I, I will say um, that there is great opportunity actually in Kansas City right now when compared to many other cities, cities on the coast where, where the problem has grown so great, we can get ahead of it here in Kansas City more so with the idea of creating, um, you know, and this is right from the community, coordinate initiatives to address homelessness, such as permanent supportive housing and realizing that it's not just about housing, it's supporting the whole person. Some people come from, uh, you know, abusive situations or mental illness or uh, drug and alcohol issues. Everybody has uh, their own set of concerns uh, and needs within homelessness. We want to make sure as a community, we're working holistically to address and tackle the issue. A livable uh, downtown is about uh, street reimagination and understanding that the automobile may have been king in the 20th century. The 21st century is about all kinds of different ways about thinking about the public realm. So a great example here where we can look and say, uh, can we do more with this street? Can we, you know, look at the ground floor environment and say, we, we don't want a big blank wall. We want things to activate the street and we want cars to come through here, but we give design cues that say that they are sharing the space with others. Or perhaps we look at it this way, where uh, we actually, for certain segments, close down the entire street. And these are very powerful things that can be community gathering points in the middle of each of uh, those neighborhoods in the mosaic. They do it in places around the world where you can uh, grab that street space, you can 
uh, still have cars come through, but you create gathering and mobility options with biking and walking and a great sense of place. All of these things are for your thoughts and consideration here today. The second uh, goal area is, is it'll kind of that larger level of connecting downtown neighborhoods. And we have certainly seen uh, plans come forth for reimagining the loop. And the idea being that the loop here has really cut off in many ways through the freeway infrastructure, these different neighborhoods with the downtown core. It wasn't always like that. Here's a picture from the 1940s where we didn't have that freeway infrastructure system and the downtown was more knit together. But now you can see, and we're all aware uh, here of the North Loop and the South Loop and the different uh, things that um, they do to impact the environment. Well, what if we could unlock some developable land and create great public open spaces, all while solving uh, environmental issues with respect to uh, stormwater infrastructure and drainage, things that flood in the downtown, a multi-objective opportunities to mitigate, uh, done through mitigating and condensing this freeway infrastructure. So here are some of the pictures you may have seen in the paper and other places uh, with respect to ideas about um, overcoming that barrier. Importantly, those are big ticket uh, uh, um, projects. It, not every intervention in that way has to be uh, so grand. There are ways to uh, take art and light and activity. This is a skate park underneath a freeway infrastructure in uh, Portland, Oregon, and it animates the whole environment. And you can start to imagine a location like this, such as Third Street here. And for much less than doing a freeway cap, uh, it, you can do these sorts of things that can create connectivity, create a safer, more comfortable walking environment, new development opportunities for the neighborhood. Streetcar expansion, as we've talked about, very critical uh, in its first phase for uh, downtown Kansas City. And now on the boards is expansion to the south and to the north. And you can see uh, all of that development potential and things that have been sparked in the area. We want to continue to leverage this, but again, continue to think in multi, um, multi-mobility ways, meaning that it's not just about the streetcar, but we can add bike lanes or pedestrian amenities such as trees and piloting perhaps no car Sundays and removing certain segments. The, the pandemic era has allowed cities maybe a little more flexibility to think, hey, we take away a parking space, we take away a lane for a day or a weekend, the world doesn't come to an end and actually it can create some great benefits for the neighborhood. And you can see some of those different elements coming together here in, in our conceptual graphic. Importantly though, and this relates very much to uh, the, the input we have received about more equitable investment, the ability to support our community members with not just North-South, but East-West connections and looking at all of those different opportunities Maybe it's through bus rapid transit this time uh, and, and supporting um, the, the new Ride KC plan and really prioritizing perhaps uh, Independence 12th and 18th Street. So we're connecting major places where people live with major employment opportunities, providing accessible, affordable, quick, efficient options for our downtown population to the east and the west of the core. And these are some uh, precedent examples of how streets can transform and look like this, or how bus rapid transit stops can be very special. We're not sidelining people in an ugly or unsheltered transit stop. We're celebrating it. And we're saying that people who ride the bus are an important part of this community and deserve to be treated as such. You can see some of the designs we're working with now are great partners at Confluence. Uh, again, a downtown Kansas City uh, firm have been working with us on these design ideas where you're looking at a street that has maybe empty uh, parking lots or vacant lots along the way. And we start to conceptualize, well, if we change the public realm, what can that do for infill development, infill affordable housing opportunities to create these great east-west connections? A final one here. Um, is the idea about the Rock Island Bridge. You may have heard of this, but 
extending over to KCK from KC Mo. The idea, maybe this is like the Ponte Vecchio in, in Florence where we activate this uh, great connection with the ability to walk across or bike across, but also shops, restaurants, views, enjoying nature, really creative stuff, all to help us with this idea of seamless mobility in many different ways that is accessible and affordable. You can see a host of these strategies that we are working on currently uh, to make sure we meet this goal. And you can see it here in, uh, in the plan view form here. One idea worth mentioning also is uh, the sense of, um, you know, on the drawing boards, perhaps a gondola going from KCK to KC Missouri, uh, cool, creative ideas. We want to hear your thoughts along these lines. I'm going to keep cruising along here. I know we're tight for time, Jamila. Uh, nurturing a prosperous and innovative economy is at the bedrock of this project. And again, we have seen the core as traditionally the downtown, but other pockets, the opportunity to create and elevate a creative economy for everyone here and provide economic opportunity and training to entrepreneurs and job seekers across myriad industries. Many different ideas here, uh, such as funding models for commercial spaces for small, minority and women owned businesses, uh, helping everybody through this pandemic winter. Small businesses, as we know, are being really hit. Uh, Jamila mentioned earlier about the ability to build um, capital and assets through different types of strategies here that you see, and particularly for people of color, including an entrepreneurial uh, accelerator program. We would love to have this right in the middle of an innovation district in the core of Kansas City. Finally, in this part, we, we wanna make sure we're looking at the whole person. Affordable and accessible daycare and childcare programs are critical. We got to look at the whole family, not just the job, not just the education. How does this all work to support livability and health for all? The Crossroads District, we want to maintain as a great urban, artistic, and gritty setting that attracts talent. There's ideas coming forth about innovation districts where the spark of electricity happens, where jobs and performances and new startups and incubators all of this with education in the uh, philanthropic areas and universities and other leaders. We've got some of that going right now with Launch KC and Digital Sandbox. And there are uh, examples uh, in the US and around the world that we are drawing from. The last couple minutes here, we have incredible assets here, as we know, in Kansas City. The sense of pride and place is palpable. It's, it's amazing. And we want to continue to support those large scale facilities uh, and, and that's critical, but also look at uh, embracing the riverfront as a natural asset, looking at our arts community throughout, envisioning places like this, Union Station, which is so grand and so uh, amazing for the community that it serves many purposes, including the right to celebrate the Chiefs Super Bowl win and the right to protest and the right to speak our minds and to be able to accommodate small and large scale events that celebrate and reflect the diversity of this amazing city. Again, Crossroads is a key piece of this river market where we wanna make sure new development is weaving in with the historic fabric to ensure that that place remains uh, cool and authentic. Building upon the sports heritage, which I don't need to tell you all is, is just a, a key marker of this incredible community. And the idea that uh, ballpark, baseball, coming to downtown should not just be about a stadium surrounded by parking lots, but it can serve so many different purposes, making sure that there's activation of plazas and public spaces, that there's mixed use development, that there's strong minority women and locally owned business hiring for construction and operations, as well as ongoing workforce training programs. All of these things to be considered to not just create a ballpark, but a ballpark district with all of these different components. This is just a, a conceptual thinking of the different uh, elements in here. This is not architecture for a new ballpark. This is about thinking where we could take this as a community. Finally, we've heard a lot about making downtown sustainable and green, and there's a great legacy to build from 
uh, from there, the original blueprint for the city. So uh, pushing forward on the Green Line and Park Network idea, the ability to think of green spaces as places of health, connection, respite, commuting, all of these different things together. And there are some opportunities to find some quick wins to do segments in the downtown that really uh, create a different place. Going, for example, from an environment like this on McGee Street to something like this that shows all of the different uh, flavor and color that we can be wayfinding, signage, new plantings, new development, the ability to get around no matter what your uh, ability and enjoy the space. All supporting this is smart and healthy infrastructure and technology is critical. Things like urban agriculture that can support each of the neighborhoods in the downtown. It's a really growing trend. And the fact that we are not uh, just humans, we are also of the earth. We are natural animals. And the idea that we should be weaving more of that into our environment in the built form and the streets and all of the spaces and places in the downtown to create, again, an equitable, inclusive and vibrant downtown Kansas City, which is about people. Ultimately, this plan is about who we are, who our children are, what we're doing now, but what we're setting forth as a template for the coming decades to celebrate and live and love together in downtown Kansas City. Nice job, nice job, everybody. Let's give a virtual applause to Chris on that, everybody. Thank you so much, Chris. Appreciate that. You covered a lot of ground in a short amount of time. And it really is so important to, to, to get our breakout groups ready, uh, to tee them up for the, the dynamic discussions that we're going to have. And so it's all about the people. It's about you all who are here today. So we so appreciate you all being with us. Let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the breakout group discussions, because that was a lot of content. And we're going to give you time to process it during our breakout group discussions. Let's go to the next slide, Chris. All right, and so Chris mentioned this framework here. We're really gonna focus in on, uh, you can just click through here. We're gonna focus in on these transformative strategies as well as the catalytic projects tonight. Let's go to the next one. So we have two key questions for you, everyone. The first one is, which of the strategies that Chris mentioned, which of them are most important, are most transformative for downtown, but also for your downtown neighborhood, for some of the adjacent communities around downtown? The second question is, which of the catalytic projects, and there's seven of them, most excites you and why? And I wanna place special emphasis on the why, okay? We wanna get a sense of why are these important to you all? So those are the questions. We wanted to keep it really simple. Uh, we have a couple of just quick agreements here. We ask that one person speaks at a time. Please be respectful. We have a lot of different viewpoints in the room. Technology happens sometimes, everyone, so let's be flexible and patient. I encourage you to use the chat to make sure that the comments are recorded in your own words. Step up, step back. If you feel like uh, you've taken up a lot of air, let's create space for some of your other colleagues in the room. And lastly, let's remember this is just one meeting in a larger process. So we don't have to feel like we have to get everything done today. We have uh, originally planned for 12 groups. Instead, we're going to have eight. So my facilitators who uh, are going to be working with you all are groups one through eight, and they know who they are. Groups nine through 12 can uh, drop off or be included in groups one through eight. So with that, everyone, have a great conversation. We're going to come back together in about 35 minutes or so, and let's go ahead. Thank you so much. Okay, everyone, <coughs> let's go ahead and jump right back into it, and we're going to pick up our recording again here. Um, so, Blaze, if you can record this for us, let's go ahead and jump in. So I hope that you all had a great set of discussions, everyone. Um, we are so excited that you're able to hang in there uh, till the end here. We might run just a touch over four o'clock, or, or sorry, six thirty your time, um, but that is no problem. So let's go ahead and jump right into these breakout discussions. And I want to invite group number one to go first. Group number one. Great, uh, Jamila. Thank you. Uh, this is Chris Klein with Confluence. We had a great group. Um, most of the the folks in our group were, um, were community residents, uh, some small business owners, um, and a variety of different areas represented. Um, we looked at uh, the transformative strategies and the top choices there were housing for all. Um, four out of the five uh, folks in our group uh, really 
uh, chose housing for all as number one. So it was, it was almost unanimous. Uh, the second choice was uh, 21st century jobs in recovery. And the third choice was uh, seamless mobility. Um, the last one was smart and healthy infrastructure, but everyone realized that that's a really strong supportive cast member. It's not the star of the show, but it's equally important. And it's probably why it didn't make its way up to uh, uh, one of the top three. Um, and then uh, the catalytic projects themselves, um, we had lots of discussion on these. Uh, we're able to go through and, and everyone ranked all their choices um, after we discussed them all. Um, the unanimous number one was East-West Connections and strengthening those, those, the connectivity all the way from the West Bottoms over to uh, the East Side. And then uh, unanimous number two was the Green Line and the Park Network, uh, just with the oh, amount of residential. It's, it's now downtown. There you go. So Chris, you can unmute yourself. There you go. Okay, Keep great. Yeah, second uh, choice was Green Line and Park Network and really needing more green space and, and, and uh, amenities uh, to support those that live and, and work in downtown. Um, and then the, the last on, on that list was the ballpark. Uh, some folks really um, wouldn't mind seeing it as long as it paid for itself uh, and, and the city wasn't in asking to invest in that before some of these other things. Um, others were a little concerned about having it in downtown and, and the impacts of it. Thank you. Thank you. So those were the, the takeaways from our group. Great, thanks so much, Chris, well done. And as you all can see, we have some live graphic recording going on here. Our colleague Lou Hexter in the background will be annotating uh, this document to get sure, make sure we have all of your feedback. So let's go ahead to group number two, group number two, please. Yes, Andrew, go for it. Like he might need to be unmuted. There you go. Oh. Jamila, yeah, uh, why don't I go ahead uh, go while work out the muting issues there. That's great. So um, uh, group number five was our group and uh, we didn't necessarily go through and, and rank per se. We dove right in and had an amazing conversation. I'll hit just some of the highlights. Um, we started really with the, the idea of that mosaic of neighborhoods and the interconnectivity and how important it is to have seamless mobility and the east-west streets and all the opportunities or east-west connections in the streets that, that offer um, those opportunities we discussed. Great quotes, together we are stronger, the different neighborhoods, the different people. Uh, not just a mosaic of neighbor neighborhoods, but a mosaic quote of people. We need to celebrate and educate and elevate with everybody. Then we, we dove into a couple key topic areas. One that was brought up by uh, one of the participants was uh, the idea, you know, we talked a lot about some of the physical things, you can see it in the projects, but uh, social development, social structures, social programs, youth, criminal justice, arts, education, all of these things are critical. And along the lines of arts, um, really thinking about how it's, arts are not just for visual beauty, they're not just for destination, they're multi-layered. They develop opportunity, interest, resource in small and accessible and affordable ways. There are lots of different layers to art that we wanna bring out in this plan. Another key area was really the intersection and the, the um, elevation at the top, and I'd say maybe number C or letter C would have been the highest level along with B is jobs development, workforce development, skills and education to create inclusive jobs, ensuring that any innovation district thinking has to foster um, minority entrepreneurship. Kelvin said, we gotta face you know, reality here and who has been missing out on growth and economic development and opportunity. We have to intentionally be very intentional about that. We also talked about the um, hospitality industry in there. Finally, 
um, a, an overriding point was all of this is good. We want to do all of this, but we're going to need tangible, specific actions and things we can do incrementally. Uh, the quote was, let's hit some singles and doubles. Maybe we'll hit a home run with a big project or something, but we need a lot of singles and doubles in order to catch up in some of these areas and to really foster and support the vision. Excellent. Thanks so much, Chris. Nicely done to, to group five there. Let's go ahead and go to Andrew now. I think we've got you unmuted. Okay. Andrew. Perfect. Thank you, Jamila. Uh, so in terms of the strategies for transformation, uh, our group focused on smart and healthy infrastructure as a foundation. And they wanted to see and elevate that. Uh, it was noted that 40% of the public realm in downtown is actually public. And we need to think about infrastructure in a way that's solid and provides a foundation for everything else. The uh, next, um, housing for all, lots of uh, interest in opportunity and uh, noted that at this point in time, we really need to be able to solve this problem for everyone. Um, 21st century jobs also got quite a bit of focus in our conversation. Lots of interest about economic activity and the expansion of economic activity, not only providing opportunity, but also providing fiscal revenues that would pay for all the other amenities and benefits. Uh, the last thing, seamless mobility. Um, that is a theme throughout the full discussion was connectivity. And we'll talk a little bit about that more in the next slide. But uh, seamless mobility, not only within downtown, but also connecting downtown to outlying areas and how do we enable people from outside downtown to come in downtown very easily? So in terms of the uh, next set of options, um, it was essentially all of the above with the exception of the uh, ballpark under the notion of connectivity. Everyone wants more connectivity between different parts of the downtown geographically, but also between different cohorts within the town, within the community, in terms of every other <clears throat> kind of descriptor you can identify. So people want to be connected and are looking for improvements, catalytic improvements. And if you want to switch uh, slides to the catalytic side of things, um, Different people saw like, different catalytic projects as actually achieving that goal around connectivity. Uh, East-West was an obvious one that got a lot of support. Yes. Greenline got a lot too. Um, the um, Reimagine the Loop also uh, had some interest, but not as much as East-West Connections and uh, Greenline. But uh, certainly the streetcar uh, was identified as something that connects people and reimagining streets, some questions about what that actually looked like, uh, but uh, the desire for safety was also identified. Uh, having a range of options in terms of how to move around, uh, transit, bicycle, ped, and feeling safety in those options. Excellent. Thanks so much, Andrew. Thanks to, to you two there for leading us in that. And uh, you can see where there's some synergy uh, and overlap in some of these themes here. Let's go ahead to our next group, group number three, please. All right, so group number three, I'm going to uh, give some highlights and some key themes because we've already heard some repeated um, ideas which is great. So in our group, something that rose to the top was definitely the mosaic of neighborhoods. Um, I would say followed by um, seamless mobility, housing for all, smart and healthy infrastructure. Um, something to note was just the interdependence of all of these strategies together. There is a little comment about um, the chicken and the egg. They're equally important and how they kind of integrate and combine with each other. Um, something for the mosaic of neighborhoods to note was the distinction of the tension of being connected and being absorbed, of keeping neighborhoods distinct, 
but also finding ways to better connect through transportation, perhaps maybe through an art walk or a parade of homes to kind of display the diversity of neighborhoods, which is very powerful. There is an example of the transformation of the crossroads area. Um, and also a comment about how creativity and entrepreneurship is driven by diverse and dense networks of people. So how important it is to have um, those people there, which also builds up all those other um, components, um, the, the need for jobs and the infrastructure to bring people also from outside of downtown to downtown. Um, I think that hits the highlights and the strategies, but we did hit on all of them about they're, they're all important. <laughs> they're all important to downtown. Um, if we go to the catalytic projects, the number one that kept rising to the top was East-West Connection. Um, and let me also shift my note screen over. <laughs> um, so, and how the East-West Connections talking about what that would take um, transit, it's critical to have adjacent neighborhoods be connected to join the riches of downtown. Um, so the ballpark was also mentioned a handful of times in an emphasis on not maybe if, but when, and that maybe paying for itself over a long period of time, but then also all these projects contributing to that and the success. So maybe a, one strategy for the catalytic projects would be um, emphasizing the ones that are maybe um, low hanging fruit and they could, um, you know, be accomplished in a short amount of time versus the ones that would take a longer or long range coordinated effort like the green line and the part network uh, or reimagining the loop. And the last thing important to mention is this, the emphasis on equity also for the east-west connections, um, not siloing things off to specific neighborhoods, but expanding that network, expanding um, the opportunities beyond the center of downtown so other people can benefit from them. Oh, and one more thing, because it was mentioned, I don't want to overlook it. So the street reimagination is specifically mentioned about pedestrian safety and how um, desirable that is for residents and for retail and um, people being able to transform the streets outside, especially now about um, safety being an emphasis, but also a draw. Excellent, well done, Erin. So I heard a lot about street reimagination, equity and mobility. Uh, it looks like that, that one on the other slide there, let's go back one, Lou, is around seamless mobility as well as really important to a lot of people. Well done to that group there, everyone. So we are uh, moving on to our next group, group number four. I'm gonna go to Kate Junkus for that, Kate. So our group felt in answering the question about transformative strategies, it really had to start with people. And so for them, D, E, and F were the places to start on the strategies. And like Erin said, they all really are mutually dependent, but they felt if you focused on D, a green and beautiful city center, supported by seamless mobility and smart and healthy infrastructure, which were all very related, and they thought some of the same projects. Uh, you'd accomplish a couple things. One, this is where the low-hanging fruit are for immediate things that people will see as changing. And they felt that D, implementing D, could be a good vehicle for overall recovery for downtown. And finally, they felt that if you did D plus E and F, it provided the foundation for to attract more housing and to attract jobs to downtown. So that was kind of their point of view on the transformative strategies. When we went to the catalytic projects, the first discussion that our group has was, do these catalytic projects really support our overall vision of an equitable, inclusive, and vibrant downtown city? And that should be the first test that we do for those projects. They also thought that, um, Shamari mentioned that equity should be a vertical conversation in these projects and, and a foundational conversation for these projects as we consider them. We also need to keep in mind that downtown has a history of silver bullet projects and after they're done, they may not be perceived in the community as welcome to all people. And so we really need to keep that in mind when we're looking at these catalytic 
projects? Which ones will make all people feel welcome? And so as they discussed the projects, um, they kind of centered on the street reimagination for a couple of reasons. One is that's something that all people in the community can benefit from and enjoy, and it's things that can be done quicker. And they thought the one that will make the most difference in terms of transforming downtown would be um, reimagining the loop. Nicely done, Kate. Thanks so much for that. And I also see some comments coming in the chat that speak to some of the other groups' discussion. Some groups who are like the Mosaic of Neighborhoods uh, exist today, and they want some guidelines as to how not to lose it. They're also interested in the Innovation District and felt like there was something there for everyone. It's intriguing. It's something that could be a real draw for Kansas City. Uh, some other comments that I see here in the chat that the Innovation District was also important for group number two, uh, something that was supported by several members. So this is fantastic, everyone. I encourage you all to use the chat too to share some additional comments and feedback. We want this to be interactive. So let's go ahead and go to our next group. And that is group number six. Jason, take it away. Good evening. Uh, I, you know, we had a, a dynamic group. Uh, in addition to that, it was a very blessed group because we had clergy that was in our group. And, and I challenge any other group to, to do that. So you guys know I'm telling the truth because I'm not going to lie with clergy being in our in our group chat. So how about that? We'll start with that. Uh, but but to begin with, uh, when, when we uh, when we started our, our conversation, the, uh, the thing that resonated the most uh, initially was affordable housing. And uh, the question that was asked was, what is affordable housing? And, uh, and, and, and that was something that uh, we talked about over and over again, define affordable housing. And and with that, you know, our, um, it, with, within our group, it, it also actually it started with the conversation about our mosaic uh, neighborhood. And uh, with that, we, we talked about how the neighborhood is changing and how it is important uh, in, in this particular case to, to maintain uh, the, the neighborhood integrity uh, on, on the west side. And, and that, that means respecting uh, you know, when we talk about the grocery stores, make, making sure those grocery stores uh, that are within those neighborhoods uh, reflect those neighborhoods and also making sure those that are currently uh, living in, in uh, those neighborhoods are able to stay in those neighborhoods. Again, I'm specifically talking about uh, the West Side in this particular case. And so uh, b beyond just the the, the, the uh, neighborhoods and mosaic housing and the housing. The one thing that was also mentioned was jobs. You know, as they talked about the housing, you couldn't talk about affordable housing without talking about jobs because without the jobs, uh, it, they, they were connected. Uh, they, they were not independent of each other. And a, another conversation uh, that we had was about mobility. And something that was very shocking was as we talk about and applaud uh, uh, the free transportation, mm -hmm. we, we had a comment that was, that was from Sarah and she said, well, I can't ride the bus. And so as much as we think about a zero fare transportation, uh, it, it, is it, is it uh, beneficial to all? And, and Sarah even mentioned that she even had to put headlights uh, on, on her uh, in her transportation so, so that she could ride at night. So we need, we need to make sure that through, throughout the conversation of mobility that we're thinking about all, all, all parties. And she, she talked about an exercise uh, with her daughter. She said at her daughter's school, the architects, which I thought was brilliant, are required to uh, ride in wheelchairs for two weeks. And so that, that will certainly give you a different perspective on, on mobility challenges and making sure that our, our streets and sidewalks are, are beneficial for all. Uh, so moving on to catalytic projects, uh, uh, the first challenge was about the uh, uh, baseball, downtown baseball stadium. And it was stated that before we build out a downtown stadium, we need to have the infrastructure in place to make that stadium happen. 
uh, the concern was uh, there's traffic now. And so if you don't have the infrastructure in place to uh, deal with the traffic, then it could be a bit overwhelming. Another comment as far as uh, uh, was the innovation district and making sure that the innovation, innovation district is inclusive and, and making sure that it represents the community in which it resides. Uh, another big idea was uh, I-35 and how it is impacted and separated the West Side neighborhood and thinking about what if we rerouted I-35? How big of an ideal is that to bring neighborhood back together instead of having it further divided? Uh, lastly, uh, we talked about the street imagination and making sure the accessibility audit is inclusive and, and it has diversity uh, throughout. Uh, I'm sorry, one, 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 one additional one. It was the East-West connection and how it's important uh, to make sure whether it's 18th and Vine and, and how the first Fridays and, and the connection from the east side is, is, the, is, is, is a connection to, let's say, the uh, crossroads and just making sure those opportunities exist as we talk about east-west connections and making sure, again, the east side of the communities have the same benefit and access to, the, uh, to those parts of the city on the west side. Uh, thank you. Nicely done, Jason. Thank you for that. And so many good nuggets there. And that group certainly was blessed because you all shared some additional nuggets that we hadn't heard from the others. One was around changing freeways from barriers to something that brings communities together, for example. Uh, mobility, and you touched on the equity and mobility piece as well. Defining affordable housing is something that's so important. And what I also heard you say is that that innovation district needs to be reflective of the community that it's in. So nicely done. Thank you for that. Let's go ahead and go to our next group, everyone. And I want to uh, bring up Ashley hand. Ashton, take it away. Thank you so much. And while Jason may have had the most blessed group, we definitely had the A team in group seven. So thank you for your patience as we got down to uh, our summary. We were definitely tied around the strategies of mosaic of neighborhoods and seamless mobility, really seeing those as kind of being uh, integral to each other. Um, and we need to continue to push forward on the steps that are being uh, taken already to bring a Missouri nine down to grade, for example, and address the North Loop, um, as well as other longer term efforts efforts, thinking about uh, Highway 7, we, we heard the 35 on the west side, but the 71 um, on the east side as a real kind of barrier to connecting and stitching together this mosaic of neighborhoods. Um, and then I think another key theme in our uh, around these strategies was that, you know, downtown needs to be for everyone, but we need more people. We need to figure out how to address the missing teeth in the development. Um, we've got incredible character in our neighborhoods, but we need to bring those people downtown that they want to be and living in those communities in the neighborhoods across downtown as a whole. So this isn't just about development, but also about programming. How do we make sure that there's things to attract people to downtown to draw kind of tourism in our own city, in our own region, and really thinking about what that means. Um, we also kind of underscored the importance of affordable housing as well. Um, that's important and key to kind of promoting the type of diversity we want to see um, and defining that was another question I know that has brought and brought up in other groups So really being clear what do we mean when we say affordable housing, what does that look like. And then when we think about the key strategy, uh, the catalytic projects and really kind of what does that mean I think there was um, strong support right out of the gate for east west connect connections I think we agree very strongly with the comments already judge linking people to jobs and activities, um, no matter where you're from across not just Kansas City, Missouri, but the region as a whole is really essential. Um, and then I think there was a lot of conversation about the, uh, the uh, in terms of catalytic projects around the green line. There was a lot of support for that, particularly because that was perceived as being extremely practical and also very feasible, that you could do that with lower cost interventions over time, instead of having to make a massive capital investment all at once, you could really create something very special that would serve a lot of purposes and create the kind of gathering spaces and the connections that we want. 
in our downtown. Um, the other uh, kind of key uh, catalytic project that was very important was the reimagination of our streets. Now we have to think about it in terms of public safety and some of the concerns. Um, and we've seen a lot of violence in Kansas City in the last several years, making sure that we're thinking about all users and how do we address public safety in these spaces. But really, I think there was consensus that this was a really important project, um, not just the streets, but the sidewalks themselves. Um, it was kind of, the expectation is we need to set a higher standard for what that uh, what uh, that experience is. Um, and then uh, there was definitely support for the innovation district, but let's make sure we include arts in innovation as as key as a catalyst for uh, opportunity. Um, and then the ballpark received kind of mixed support, you know, definitely been something we've been talking about for a long time, but we just got to make sure we do it right. And I think everyone kind of felt that what we saw around these other projects would lay a possible foundation for the ballpark overall, but um, really it's about bringing more people downtown and making sure that these spaces are people centric that we're providing places for gathering for recreation and for healthy living. Nicely done. That was a team report. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Ashley. That's fantastic. I heard a lot of good things in there. Higher standards for our pedestrian experience, for example. East-West Connections is a major uh, theme here throughout all of our discussions. Regional housing jobs connections, and I see that in the chat coming through too, uh, that it's so important that we need institutions and job employment centers east of downtown. Uh, that pay scale to other parts. Density, density, density is mentioning. Mosaic of neighborhoods is coming in strong as well, uh, being sure that we are reflective of the communities that uh, are currently living there. Let's keep this going, everyone. I see also more for owner development and three bedroom units for families. Nicely done. All right, let's go to Anne to take it away for our last group, please. Anne. Great, thanks, Jamila. I'm happy to be the closer. I'm known for being short and concise, so hopefully that will keep us on track. Um, Things I wanna point out from our discussion group uh, regarding the transformative strategies is that there was really a balance between jobs and housing. The, we first focused on housing for all and we got into some of those details about affordability. What does that mean to different people? Um, and how is choice involved? And in that chat that Ashley just threw out kind of hits on it. You know, a, a studio apartment may be affordable, but that's not what maybe is always needed. Um, so, and, and then also when we look at the whole mosaic of neighborhoods, we saw that there was opportunity for different types of housing as appropriate to different neighborhoods. Um, but without 21st century jobs, I mean, you wanna live near where you work these days. So we, we thought it was equally important that we uh, look at those 21st century jobs and the opportunities there. Um, so that's, oh, and then if you don't have a vibrant city that's green and beautiful, with the, with the reimagined streets, then the, the other pieces fall apart. So that's my kind of quick overview on the transformative strategies. On catalytic projects, number one above all was um, East-West Connections. And that was from a transportation perspective. And really um, one of our members stated, you know, anything that we can the do to try to help overcome the segregation in the city, we should do. Um, so whatever form those connections take, um, closely behind that was the innovation district. And part of the focus there was A, it brings you 21st century jobs and B, and starting to bring that university presence, which is a big part of the innovation district into downtown and providing those opportunities, um, but doing it in a way that is beneficial to the neighborhood that it sits in and that those people are actively involved in how it's planned. Um, and then shortly behind that would have been the green line and the 670, well, the, sorry, the reimagining the loop. We ended up talking about the 670 loop in particular. And then, then we kind of got into the short term versus long term. Like some of these things are quick wins. Some of them take longer. And that's, that's kind of where the ballpark discussion came up. We're like, well, we could see lots of benefits from that. That's a long term project. Um, there were other things said, and so I know I want my group to know they were all captured in the notes if I didn't hit on them directly, but I think I've given you the high level um, input. 
Nicely done, and thank you for that. So what I heard there was a really important balance of both the quick wins, but also looking more long term at our efforts to revitalize the downtown core. I see some comments coming in in the chat too, uh, that it's so important to remake the bus system and have focus on the east west connectivity, and perhaps starting in uh, the summertime. Great point around supporting public safety and lower crime, which is fundamental to infrastructure. Nothing else happens if safety is compromised. So everyone, this is fantastic. Let's give ourselves just a group round of applause here everyone we're in the home stretch of our conversation today uh, i see also coming in the chat developing projects initiatives to bring neighborhoods together while respecting their individual cultures honoring that individual neighborhood identity uh, is really important and so uh, i want to just ask i want to thank lou so much for for this recording lou let's go to that first screen i just want the the, the whole group to see uh, what we're working with here, everyone. So in terms of overall, it looks like we had a lot of really uh, strong support for all of these features. And I just want to call out, this is about holistic interdependent elements that make a healthy downtown. So it's not surprising that it's pretty balanced throughout everything. But I do see a large number of checks and support. Seamless mobility seems to be coming up first, followed by housing for all. Uh, some strong support for the 21st century jobs as well and the others have about the same level of support so this is really interesting stuff here and let's go one more over Lou if you don't mind I just want to take another look at the catalytic projects here to get a sense of what were the big picture items here so it looks like as I can see here wow we had a lot of support for the east-west connections that one's coming in real strong in there transit is essential expanding equity um, to overcome these barriers that have existed for so many years, instead to use them as opportunities to bring us together, to see some really strong support for reimagining the loop as well. Um, connectivity, connectivity, connectivity. We want projects that benefit everyone. So nicely done, everyone. We're going to go ahead and go back to our PowerPoint as we wrap this up here, everyone. I appreciate you hanging on tight. We're almost in the home stretch here. So I'm going to ask Chris to bring us back up with our PowerPoint show, and we're going to talk to you a little bit about the next steps that are happening in our process. Next steps. There we go. It's coming up. All right. Excellent. Oops. Going back to the start here. We're at the very end after my long presentation, sorry. No problem. Here we go. We did the report back. We're back to here. Great. So everyone, as this is coming up, we recognize, as I mentioned at the top, that we uh, we know that everyone couldn't be here who wanted to. Uh, and so for that reason, we want to make sure that everyone can give input and feedback on some of these thoughts. And so we have an online survey uh, that's available for everyone to participate and share their thoughts and ideas with us. It'll be open till about the end of January. So please be sure to check it out, share it with your friends and family. We want everyone to, to chime in and give thoughts and ideas. In addition to that, what else is coming next, you might be wondering. So we'll have some ongoing community engagement activities. This is a real driver of our entire process. And so this will continue uh, from beginning to end. So we'll have some more activities that you all can take part in. We're also really excited about continuing to refine the strategies and refine those projects that we discussed with you today, building largely on the input that you shared. And all of that will help us develop this draft plan in early 2021. Believe it or not, that's right around the corner. So we want you all to stay involved, to stay with us, hold us accountable to these ideas that we've shared. You can connect with us via social media as well as our project team mailing list. Take that survey that I mentioned. Stay tuned for updates on the draft plan. And as always, you're welcome to connect with us via the Imagine at downtownkc.org. Lastly, a plug for the podcast. I want to thank Kimmit uh, so much for him being here. It's a really great way for you to connect with the project in a way um, that's exciting and interesting. And so uh, I want to thank you all so much for being with us today. We couldn't do this without you. This is about your downtown. It's about your downtown Kansas City. So thank you so much. Uh, have a great rest of your day, and we'll be in touch soon. Take care.